What's up people? Today we are beginning with a new informational series, Financial Literacy for All. Our today's session will be on the most basic aspect of economics, the concept of demand. This is important to understand the various economic transactions in today's world. So let's begin. What is demand? Let's break this into two parts. The first, desire. So I desire to buy a BMW, an iPhone, gold and a lot more. However, the second one is more important. Willingness. You should not only have the money to buy these things, but should also be willing to pay for it. So, desire plus willingness to pay constitutes demand in economics. This leads us to the law of demand. Let's take an example. Suppose I wanted to buy Red Bull cans and I have a fixed amount of money with me. In the beginning, if one can costs $50, I can buy almost 200 cans. However, later the price of one can rises to $80. Now I can afford to buy only 150 cans. As the price rises even further, the number of cans I can afford to buy decreases significantly as shown in this table. As you can see, demand is heavily dependent on price. Thus, the law of demand states other things remaining constant, the quantity of goods demanded fall with a rise in price and vice versa. So what are these other things which should remain constant? They are in fact the assumptions of this law and also the factors which affect demand. Let's see them one by one. There is no change in your tastes, preferences, habits and demographics because if my tastes and preferences change then I may shift to coke from Red Bull but that does not validate. Your income should remain constant because if my income changes I can buy more Red Bull cans. There should not be any substitutes available for the commodity. Thus for every McDonald's there should be no Burger King available. There should not be any change in the prices of other products. Simple, if petrol becomes expensive, it will affect the demand for cars and scooters. There should be no change in government policies such as taxation. As we all know, if a product is taxed more, its price will increase and hence affect demand. And finally, there should be no change in the quality of the product. Few. Those were a lot of assumptions which need to be constant. If you plot the example of the Red Bull cans on a graph, we get a demand curve. And if you observe this, the demand curve is downward sloping from left to right. This focuses on the inverse relationship between price and demand. Well, this relation may not always hold and sometimes the curve may slope upwards. When? Let's see. Called as the exception to the law of demand, the first one is the Giffen's Paradox. Named after Scottish journalist and statistician Sir Robert Giffen, these are inferior goods which have no close substitute. They do not follow the law of demand. That is, the price of these goods increases, the demand also increases and vice versa. An example given by Giffen was that of bread and lamb. Assume Miss Anna who has an income of $200 where bread is priced at $4 for one packet and lamb is $60. Bread being an essential commodity, she allots $140 to bread and $60 for lamb. Now if the price of bread increases, no guys you guessed it wrong, Anna is not going to reduce her consumption of bread. Instead, she will spend more on bread as it is not only essential but also affordable as compared to lamb. Well, this concept is difficult to digest and hence difficult to find in real life. 
The next exception is Weblin goods. Now these are goods which spell luxury and confer social status to the owner. So status conscious people will buy even more if the price increases. So all you brand fanatics, all your branded products like Louis Vuitton, Apple products, Bentley and anything that spells luxury, you really don't care if the price increase. The next exception is necessities of life. Well, this law does not apply to necessities such as food and clothing because even if the price of these goods increase, the consumer will not reduce his demand. The next exception is war and pandemics. Come on, we are in the middle of a pandemic that is the COVID-19. So we see that even though the prices of sanitizers and masks have gone up, the demand has equally gone up. The next exception is depression. During depression, the prices of commodities fall, but yet people cannot buy more of them because of lack of purchasing power. And the last one is speculation. When you speculate that the price of certain things is going to rise in the future, you begin buying them now, even as the price increases. Now that you have understood the exceptions to the law of demand, let us understand two important concepts, change in demand and shift in demand. As we know, the price is the most important factor that affects demand. So when price changes, demand changes too. We already saw that with our example of Red Bull cans. Now let's discuss what happens when the other factors discussed earlier change. Well, that results in a shift in the demand curve. Let's take an example with a factor called income. Assume Anna in a given income could buy an iPhone only for herself at price P. Hence, her demand was at Q. But now, Anna's income has increased. So now, she can buy more iPhones for her family as well. Thus, her demand curve for iPhones shifts from the original Q to Q1, where the price of iPhones remains the same. Conversely, if her income decreases, then her demand curve shall shift to Q2. Thus, apart from price, if any of the factors discussed earlier changes, the demand curve shifts itself. A shift to the right implies increase in demand, while a shift to the left implies decrease in demand. So to summarize guys, for individuals like you and I, the law of demand pretty much works as explained earlier. However, for the economic point of view, it is an important concept which guides the actions of our government and policy makers. Policy makers in general increase or decrease the interest rates in the economy to influence the demand that is consumption in the economy. In fact, everything right from inflation, interest rates, taxation, etc. are variables which are considered to influence demand. Well, more of that in another session. I hope you have cleared your concept of demand. See you soon in our next video on the concept of supply. Until then, don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Peace.